So just quick introductions. Uh, I'm Jared Ray, uh, CTO and founder of Tier 3. I'm also the creator of the Iron Foundry project. That's the project that enables .NET on Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry is the open source project from VMware that does platform as a service. And uh, what we're going to talk about is building a better cloud, what we see for that. <coughs> When you kind of think about the evolution of IT and cloud services, it always starts with where we were before. Pre-2006, we did everything on physical infrastructure. We did the OS install, configuration, management, everything was on that. When we started going into cloud, especially with virtualization with the onset of VMware, we really got into now the compute storage and network was really being built at a virtualization layer. Now that management is being transferred uh, with the onset of AWS, that was a big popular thing. Tier 3 actually started in 2006, offering a computing, compute storage and network. And really, what that did is it enabled a whole bunch of things. It enabled the operations teams to now have flexibility, enabled us to have better costs. We could consolidate workloads on a single box and get that efficiency that we wanted. But also, it made it so that the overall management for infrastructure as a service such as the compute storage and network, were now fully managed by the managed service provider. Who that, whoever that was, that cloud service provider, before there even anybody called it cloud. And so application and OS was really kind of what infrastructure as service was about. Now we go to 2009, in less than three years, a whole new world comes up. This is called platform as a service. Platform as a service really takes on a whole different meaning. It's where a lot of people are going these days, where they believe that application tier is really the focus, and that should be the primary thing that we see over and over again. Where you deploy an application, that runtime is executed, you do not worry about the OS, compute, network, storage layer, and you can consume those services on the back end, like database, uh, message queuing, caching, all of those things are now given to you and you just use them at a utility feed type basis. You subscribe to them, access them, use them, and really now the developer is fully in control. This is where we see uh, cloud going with the, this next step. So what's next? We believe a better cloud is going beyond what we normally see of uh, infrastructure as a service. A lot of people are saying, oh, we're a cloud because we have infrastructure as a service. Uh, and we believe it's going into on-demand services. On-demand services are things like Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry is known as a PaaS system, platform as a service, but really it's a whole bunch of services all com combined together and working in harmony, such as you can deploy your web application on it, it automatically scales, provisions, it has monitoring, it has health checks. Also, you can consume other services around that, such as database as a service, caching as a service, uh, RabbitMQ messaging services. Uh, things like that are big keys for PaaS, where they all work together. You can deploy your code, and we're actually going to show you examples of being able to deploy a multi-language application on a single framework, and it just works. It deploys, gets up and running, it scales. You don't have to worry about all those things underneath the covers. So this is kind of where we see the world going. We have, of course, infrastructure and service. This is really what tier three is all about. And a lot about the other cloud vendors out there. When Amazon came out with S3, everybody was like, I don't understand what object storage is. Then they came out with EC2. EC2 totally redefined the way that people were consuming their service and even consuming S3. But they also started figuring out we need to add more services. And at tier three, we, we have the same model. We believe in adding those services, but really focusing on the enterprise and being able to show the efficiency and management. So of course, we start with infrastructure as service as the baseline, and now we add a service boundary. Database as a service, web application via Cloud Foundry and Iron Foundry. We're going to be adding caching and messaging also later on. Then of course, you add a unified management system. This is one of the keys that we've seen over and over again that's a big problem for PaaS. PaaS right now, and even infrastructure as a service, we're seeing a lot of vendors that are coming out and offering a non-cohesive way of managing multiple clouds. There's big problems with that, in the enterprise especially. You have problems with policy management. You have problems with having security that actually works between different workloads, especially with applications being able to talk to each other. 
one drastic change that's happened in the last decade is applications do not isolate themselves anymore. We've gone more to an SOA layer where an application needs to talk to another application via APIs, a database call, or other methods, and it needs to do it securely with a very seamless integration. By adding these services and this unified management, we now have access via APIs and also a uh, portal to be able to control things. This is a big push that everybody's doing, AWS, Tier 3. And now, of course, you add in more stuff. Orchestration, automation, account management, API. This is what really a cloud is about. This is where everybody needs to go. This is where they have to go. If we just say we're going to do compute forever, PaaS and other infrastructure as a service offerings are going to struggle. We're going to basically be the hosting 2.0 world. By taking all of these services and putting them all under one cloud, you actually have a full product that enterprises can use on a daily basis. Great use case. So this is a CRM application that we've seen over and over again. Go in, talk to your IT director, the IT director says, I want CRM, and I've already picked the vendor, and you're going to deploy it. Typical thing that we always see in the enterprise, you know, UCIO. They go in and deploy, they have a load balancer, they deploy three, you know, infrastructure service VMs, right? They spin them up, get them up and running, they have everything up and running, and then they go ahead and they add a SQL backend. That SQL backend now is, you know, an active passive node or even a cluster. But of course, IT operations now is managing not only the CRM application, the customer user experience, but also the SQL backend. This is a huge operational load. This is something that's changed in the last couple of years where we're going from how do we get efficiencies out of compute and storage and networking, which we did with virtualization, to now what really we need is now business agility. By adding in multiple services, such as data fabric, where you have database as a service, you're now taking over half of the workload off that operations team and you're automating it for them. With database as a service, now the CRM application that was on a cluster and being fully managed by an operations team can now be managed by database as a service. What's different about this is in most PaaS environments and even infrastructure as a service, they think of these as isolated products, which is a big problem. Isolated products where you can't, you know, you have database as a service and it only works on PaaS, and then you have infrastructure as a service and it can't talk to any other services. Here, even tier three is now going into the next step where we allow any type of service to talk to each other in a very secure, isolated manner. And of course, the next thing that happens, which for some reason you can't see it all the way, um, you get a dashboard. You know, the CIO says, great, this CRM application was wonderful, the IT operations team did a great job. Now, I want you to deploy a dashboard that fully has integration with ERP, our CRM system. It has all this uh, new you know, widgets that everybody wants. And we want you, of course, to deploy this in a month because I'm the CIO and CIO uh, really want this. Normally, what happens in that op IT operations load, a project manager gets assigned a whole bunch of devs. And then they talk to the IT operations team and they say, I don't want to manage this. This is your problem. you got to go and figure it out. This small application that usually shouldn't take any IT operation load in most enterprises <coughs> are taking a lot. They consume a lot of resources. They have to be supported. They have to be maintained. The VMs have to be overall managed and also the application. With being able to offer a web fabric or PaaS application via Cloud Foundry, these simple applications can be deployed inside the enterprise and can, can, can be consumed and talked to the CRM application seamlessly in a secure manner. This is where you start actually offloading a lot of the IT operations with services. So what have we done? We've taken something that probably would take 12 to 15 servers to be able to manage and maintain for that IT operation scheme, and now they're basically three. The only three that they have to manage which is that legacy application. Later on, they can actually replace that when that vendor or that's It's just going to take time. Cool. So I didn't want to bore you with a ton of stuff, but of course, you know, 
We believe in it. There's a lot of other partners that really believe in the next version of cloud. That's really what this is all about, enabling PaaS. And so this is kind of the next step that we want to do. Um, of course, Adrian, Luke, I think Eric is even going to show some demos. So I think, Adrian, you're next up. And uh, like I said, that's pretty much it. We're not going to go too much into